Hi everyone, it's Jerry Ann with Scrap and Stamp Creations.blogspot.com. And tonight we are revisiting a favorite of the group, which is um, a box that we're going to create um, that can be found on my um, blog over at Scrap and Stamp Creations.blogspot.com. And it's the um, if you look for 10-1-2012, you'll find the pattern for the box. So tonight we're going to create the box, and we're also going to do um, what is called the bandana technique. And for this technique, you will need um, some uh, dark colored cardstock. Um, you're going to need... Um, some dark colored cardstock. Um, I'm going to be using today the stamp set, the stamp of the month, which is S1502, a happy hello. You can get this stamp set for $5 with a $50 order, or you can purchase it for $17.95. Um, either way, you can purchase it over on my blog, which is or, which, or not on my blog, on my website, which is jerryannarmstrong.ctmh.com. And um, so that is really exciting. And uh, let's see. Now I've got my thingy upside down. All right. So I will show you the stamp of the month for this month is on page 18 of the catalog. It's called A Happy Hello. It's all these pieces. We made some cute little cards last week showing how you could do one layer or really simple multi-layer cards. Today we are going to um, do the bandana technique. Um, and so I'm really super, super excited about that. And we are going to um, create a box. And we're going to create some cards to go in the box so that you can give them as a gift. So we'll go through the cards in a little while. Um, and as for our box, I just threw my punch back in there I think I'm going to need. Maybe not. What did I do with it? We're going to have to find that punch. Anyway. All right. So I'm going to turn over my piece of paper here. I am going to push you guys out just a little. How many people know what the bandana technique is? I'll just fold my cards until I hear from somebody. Anybody know what the bandana technique is? Nope. I don't think so. Well, it is a technique that, oh wow. Well, I'm excited. It's something new for you guys. Yay! All right. Well, let me get my cards all folded up. And that you are going to need. Nope. I'm going to fold up a few of these. Get them settled so that when we cut up our paper, our random stamped bandana paper. So Sophie, do you know what the bandana technique is? Not a banana te technique, but a bandana. So we're going to make 10 cards or somewhere soon. Bandana. What do you think? Jan? Anybody? Okay. 
I'm so excited. This is exciting that here's something you guys haven't seen. Yay! This is the bandana technique. What's wrong? So this is the bandana technique. So we take a piece of good old dark cardstock. And of course these will look so much better. So I did two. I did. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So I have two already done. And then um, the one that we're doing is I will do for cards. And we'll make the cards to go in the box. So these I stamped earlier so we didn't have to stamp three pages. And um, so we'll set these aside. We're going to grab, um, if you want to follow along and do what I'm doing, you need a piece of outdoor denim cardstock, which is just super, super cute. You are going to need a Happy Hello stamp set. S1502. And the first thing that we're going to use is the close to my heart um, white daisy pigment based ink car, or pigment based ink Z2163. A lot of you have gotten this from me, and so we're going to use it tonight. So I'm excited. All right, so first things first. We're going to go ahead and we're going to random stamp our piece of blue paper. So what I do and have done, let's see, where's my, I've cleaned all my stamps and they're kind of stained or if I've used them for specific things, they're stacked over here in the corner. So I've got our half a, um, half a flower here, this one right here that makes a complete circle. And I'm going to start with that and we're going to start random stamping kind of our um, our paper. So I usually put my corner here and I, let's see, I can give you guys a couple more. There we go. I usually start in a corner and move this way. And that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stamp right there in the corner. They've got my white ink. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp like four or five going across the page. Ah. Okay. It's a stamping technique. Oops. Gonna have to clean off my white ink here. Gonna grab my baby wipe. And this is pigment ink, so it is juicy, you guys. Juicy ink. Yeah. Okay. Can we get a check? Yes. <laughs> Bye. You're leaving? Sure. Yeah. He does, but he's, he needs to take the week off. Next week he'll take it off. I don't know. We'll see.
third. Forget. So all we're doing is taking and stamping kind of circles. I thought this technique went really well with these stamps. So there's our first set of stamping. We're going to go ahead and take and semi clean our block here. And with this being pigment ink, um, I am using my stamp cleaner. Okay. So our next piece is we're going to take this piece, which is from the set, which is this one right here. And that maybe I'll zoom you guys in a little closer now that we kind of have seen the pieces. So we're using this piece right here and we're gonna stamp inside each and every one of these guys.
All right, so now we've added those little pieces in. And again, I'm just going to clear off my stamp set here a little bit. Okay, our next piece is also in white ink, and it is this little piece right here. Okay, and we're going to stamp that right in the center. And as you can see, my stamping is kind of wobbly. Not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. The technique is going to look at it, make it pop and everything. All right, and we need this one once more. So we missed this little piece right here. Okay, that looks really good. All right, so our next piece is, where is it? Right here. This one right here is our next one that we're going to stamp in white. And we're going to stamp kind of in triangles. Make sure to go off the page. Okay. And then our last piece that we are stamping in white is this one right here. You guys just mesmerized because I'm stamping what? You guys aren't talking. All right. That looks like I got just about everything. So I'll push you guys out so you can see the whole page. So this is just with the white. Well, that's why you start at one corner and go across and then kind of put the pieces in. And then you just make sure that your stamped images kind of go in between. I really like the threes kind of idea. So if you kind of look, these three, these three pieces here, you've got one, two, three in between them. You've got one, two, three. And then if you do the same thing with these three, you've got one, two, three, one, two, three. You know, so you can kind of one, two, three, these three, you've got two here and one there, one, two, three. So you just kind of add threes around things. It, it <laughs> that's okay, Nicole. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to do it. All right. So our next piece, we are going to move to our black ink. You guys can count to three. You can do this. I promise. All right. So now we have our archival black ink, which is 44751. So <laughs> I send you goodies, Martha. Seven, uh, 44751 is the archival black ink. And our very first stamp is going to be this piece right here on our set. And we are going to stamp around this little 
um, circle in order to add some of the black detail to our stamping. All right, so that takes care of the black pieces. So you guys see, stamp the black in there. Okay, our next piece is going to be this stitched circle right here. And we're gonna stamp that in black. And we're gonna do the threes again. We're just gonna kind of add these in between. So where there's kind of a big spot that it fits, you're gonna stamp in there. You want to make sure that there's black all over, that you're not forgetting anything. You guys see it there? Ah. So that's the stitched one. And then our last one that we are doing is um, this one right here, this little piece right here. And we are going to fill in little pieces. And you'll see where they go as you kind of um, stamp you'll see where they're supposed to be because there's openings for them. You'll be like, oh, there isn't one in that spot. There isn't one in that area. There's all these other things, but there's not one of those. All right, so here is my paper all stamped up with all the pretty stuff all right let me take a photo of it really quick so i can send it to facebook All right. <laughs> okay, I can hear you pretty good, James. guys so now it's heading over to my Facebook so you guys can get a really good idea of what it looks like I'm 
Okay, so we're going to set this aside for a few minutes to dry because this is the one we're going to cut up for cards. Okay, so again, this is our piece that we're cutting up for cards. Looks very similar to the ones I did. Okay, so we're going to set this one over to dry. And then what I'm going to do is dump all these stamps in a box because I have to clean them all really well. Some of these I'm going to want for our other project, but if I at least put them in a box, on their blocks, they will get done. All right, so again, here is the um, template for the box we're going to make. And the box was done in, this is my own kind of rendition of the famous box that I created. All right, I took a, a feminine box and um, the paper is blue, yes. It is outdoor denim. It is outdoor denim paper. The other thing, oh, we should go back and do this really quick. Another thing is, um, find my the other thing that you can do is take some white paint or a gel pen and your stylus and be careful and dip your white paint and you can add some dots in different places Forgot this part. So this is just plain white craft paint using my stylus. I won't tell you it's been like 55, 60 here. <laughs> Compared to you guys who are freezing. It just makes, it's the little details. It's not even so much, it's not hard to do. It's just adding those little details. It's just adding those details that make all the difference. And you can keep going and the dots just get smaller and smaller. Or you can do like I'm doing and do like three and then re-dip. And it's just a tiny bit of paint. But it does make a huge, huge, huge. You're welcome. You'll have fresh strawberries before I do. Maybe.
So this is for our card, so I'm doing this little piece right now because it'll dry as we put our box together and you guys can print out your templates if you want. But we're doing the famous box. It's like one of my projects that, one of my very first projects which I absolutely adored and it was such a huge hit and it was so much fun and I think we laughed and giggled that night so much because my inspiration came from um, from the drugstore. Just looking for a nice way to put that. And that. So it is a fun little project. It's easy to do. YouTube people to continue to follow me opposed to flagging me for saying that. But yes, that's what it was. <laughs> I don't have the box anymore. I just have the template. <laughs> Okay. You have a good night, honey. I want to do this in red. I think it would look so pretty in red. With a red and white and black bandana look. Yep. It definitely is a patriotic kind of theme look. I was just going for the denim look. It was kind of one of those things that I was just, you know, I saw this stamp set and I thought, oh, I should have done this much earlier in the month because I, I was like, oh my gosh, it lends itself so well to this technique. Fourth of July picnics and yeah, all that kind of stuff. I've got you guys so zoomed in, you can't see anything. I have found the last couple 
And now we will get to our famous box. Oh, I got one more over here. All right. Oh, I missed one over there. Nope, it is the White Daisy Pigment Ink. And what I'm using is um, just white uh, acrylic paint and the end of our thing. Um, but I do think that the chalk marker would work as well. I did kind of, I tried it out with a couple of different kinds of things. So here is the red with the white and the black. And the black is one of the brush tip markers. And here is it stamped in black and accented with white. And this is on cranberry cardstock. So you can see two very similar, exactly the same pattern, two different styles, stamping in black, stamping in white. So it's all about what you like. I had fun. All right, so now I'll put this up and let it dry. Yeah, they turned out really, really cute. Uh-oh, don't do that. I want that to be good because I'm going to use that next. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one turned out really pretty, and it's very dramatic. And, uh, but I, I do like the white one too. I mean, it just definitely, this is more traditional, but you can stamp mm -hmm. color on color and then the white as well. That works really well. You can take, um, a white, this is a Prismacolor white and you can add little dots. You can add swirlies. Kind of some of the doodling kind of stuff. So that works really well. So, all right, now we're off to our box. Woohoo! Here's our very first piece of paper. And this is going to be for the back of the box and the lid. And we are going to cut our paper to seven and a half by 11. And again, these are over on my blog. Um, Scrap and stamp creations .blogspot.com, um, October 1st, 2012 is the day for these. So I'm going to cut this at seven and a half. This is extra for cards or note cards or that. And we're going to cut at 11 inches. The cat is attacking Princess. The cat is going to go away. All right. So we have a seven and a half by 11. Okay. And our second piece we need is eight and a quarter by 10. So eight and a quarter. by 10. Okay. So eight and a quarter by 10. Now you're going to need your scoring board. All right. And we're going to start with the seven and a half by 11. I'm going to grab my stylus here and we are going to score at one and a half and 
and at at six. Okay, so one and a half and at six inches. Okay, we're gonna turn it to the 11 inch side and we're gonna score at one and three quarters. We're gonna score at three and three quarters. At nine and three quarters. Okay, so again, one and three quarters, three and three quarters, nine and three quarters. All right, so this is kind of the score lines on the back, okay? Okay, so that's that one scored. We're gonna score our second piece. Now on the 10 inch side, 10 inches across the top, we're gonna score at three quarters. We're gonna score at two and three quarters. We're gonna score at seven and a quarter. And we're gonna score at nine and a quarter. Okay? So that's three quarters, two and three quarters, seven and a quarter, nine and a quarter. Okay? We're gonna rotate to the eight and a quarter inch side and we're gonna score at three quarters. This is the top of our box. And then we are going to score at six and three quarters. Six and three quarters, okay? All right. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to take our trusty little scissors and we're gonna do some cutting, okay? So we're gonna go back to our piece that is seven and a half by 11. And we are gonna go, there's pieces up here at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and score everything so you guys can get a better idea of where things are. Okay, so here are all my score lines. You guys should be able to see them now. A little better, okay? So our very first cut is we're gonna cut out the center piece here. We're gonna cut out our score. Okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna angle this to the corner. So we end up with kind of a triangle out of it. We're gonna do exactly the same thing with this second piece. We're gonna cut out our score line. Right here's our piece. We're just gonna trim it out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna angle this in. Okay? Now, we need this whole piece here but we're gonna cut in on the side. And we're gonna cut all of this off. Hey James, you're really loud, honey. It's okay. All right. So we're cutting out that spot. So we have flap, piece with a score, and then we've cut out the edge, okay? 
We're going to do exactly the same thing for the other side. Okay, so now we have a piece that looks like this. Okay, that is the outside and the flap of our box. Now you can grab a corner rounder. I'm grabbing mine again. And you can round the two corners here at the bottom. And then also this corner here. And this corner here. Okay, round the corners. Okay, so round, round, and the rounds on the bottom. All right, so that takes care of the cutting out for this piece. So now we're gonna take our piece that is 10 inches by eight and a quarter. Here's our three quarter inch piece. We're gonna go ahead and score everything around. And I did learn that if you um, want a good um, crease that's not really gonna break or tear or anything, that you should kind of crease both sides. Okay, so you're just gonna give it a good little burnish on all of your scores. Okay, so now with our three quarter inch side up at the top, we're gonna cut out the top two, leaving this little lip right here. And we are going to cut out the other two. So on the three quarter inch piece, we're cutting out leaving the top little flap, okay? Now what we're going to do is we are going to cut out the corner here. And we are going to cut out the center here. We're going to cut the score line out. I got that one really close. There we go. Okay, we're going to cut the score line out of this one. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and cut this corner piece off. Okay. So now what you should have, and actually I'm um, going to round these corners. not really going to see those. And we're going to go ahead and round these corners as well. Okay. So now we are ready to assemble our trusty little box. 
So now I'm going to take my score tape. And I'm going to use my quarter inch score tape. I thought I had some open. I do have a little on this roll, but I think I'm going to have to have a new roll too. And what we're going to do is you are going to attach score tape to our piece on the flap sides. Okay, one flap. flat. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to attach our box at the back. So we're going to go ahead and take up this score tape. On this side. And we're going to lay this down, meeting up our edges and, and following our score lines. Okay. The best part about this is now we can flatten our box. and it should line up perfectly. Okay, for our top of our box, we need to add score tape to these little tabs, and this probably would have been easier to do had I done this before we actually like folded that one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take and create the top of our box. There's the top flap of our box. These pieces go in. The littler tab goes on the inside. The bigger tab goes on the outside. So we're going to add our score tape right along the bottom edge. And voila, we have our famous box. So the nice thing about this box is you can give a set of cards 
in the box with envelopes as a nice little gift. And it's a flip top. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show you the designs of the cards we're going to make. And I'm going to um, attach this little flap down. On the inside of our box. Okay, so we have our our cute little gift box, card box, any of that. We can tie a ribbon around. We can do all kinds of things. So now we're going to move on to, um, I went online and was looking for years and years and years and years ago because I have been, I have been paper crafting since before Harrison was born and Harrison was born in 2002 so probably about between 2000 about 2001 is when I started scrapbooking so that would be like 14 years there was a pattern to take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock paper random stamp whatever in order to make 10 or 12 cards well Somewhere in the way, I seem to have lost that pattern, so I went looking for something earlier. Couldn't really find what I was looking for, and that <laughs> you could put it in your un you could put your unmentionables in it and stick it in the bathroom at work. You could leave it on your counter; nobody would know. Although it might, you know, get wet, but you know, um, put it underneath the sink. So anyway, I went looking for a um, all-in-one template um, to make those 10 or 12 cards. So these are some of the styles that we are going to create tonight to go into the, um, the uh, whatever it is, the box. <laughs> so I have this one. I have three cards that are not completely embellished yet. So there's this one that says a happy hello. So we're gonna do these exactly pretty much the same. Um, then this is the same sentiment. I just split it into two. Then here is it stamped in white with a couple of brads. Here is those tick things may, or um, tags with the sentiment and some bling in white. Again, a very similar card with the pieces. Um, so that was the theme of this is a happy hello and I made the little blingy pieces here and that and then I used my Martha Stewart punch for the butterfly and um, created some dimension with the yellow and black. This is canary and I absolutely love canary. Um, I'm really into wanting to do sunflowers and things like that so I do have a few stamps that are coming summer wise spring wise end of summer we'll have some really fun things so and then I have these cards that are not finished so we will get those done as well all right so the next videos for those of you who are watching the recording I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and I will move on to the card pieces um, and that way you guys can make your box and then come back at a later time and make your cards or just find the cards or the box. All right. So I look forward to chatting with you. Come on and find recording number two for tonight's class on February 23rd, 2015.